Les Parrott talked about something called impulses and a three second rule. We're going to talk about some of those things. But a lot of people give up even before they try something. And if you don't try something, you'll never ever succeed. Okay? A lot of people, when a challenge comes to them, they're basically like, no, that's too much. They don't take action because on one hand they feel the action could be the right thing, but it could be the wrong thing, so they just don't do anything and keep going with that. They shirk responsibilities because it's easier to shift the blame than to take a responsibility for something that's gone wrong. And a lot of people will do the bare minimum because if they do the bare minimum, they'll get paid, they'll turn up, go to work, get paid, do the, go back home and so forth. And so the bare minimum will certainly get you through life, but often the satisfaction in those people is very, very low. So what is this three second rule that Les Perra talks about? And it's really about the first and second impulses. Whenever an, a, a, an action, an event, a situation, or an opportunity presents it to you, you really have what's often called your first instinct. And the first instinct is really about everything that you've learned up to this point that will cause you to make decisions. And the decisions you make really come from memory files stored into your brain. And so often when we get asked for certain things, the first thing that comes out of our mouth is not even thought of, it's literally just instinct. What Les Perrot talked about is this thing called the second rule, and with a second impulse. And there's six steps to empowering yourself and thinking about the second impulse. We're basically skipping the instinct thinking about it, and then making an action. And the first one is that in every situation, you need to be able to empower yourself. Because if you have, feel empowered, you often feel more confident, and you're able to make better decisions. The truth is, you cannot do everything that comes towards you. But we already said that an impulse of try, not trying it at all is wrong. And so when some, an opportunity arises to you that is of high demand of you, you really need to be able to say, look, it may not be perfect, but I can certainly give it a go. You need to be able to say, this is within my expertise, but this maybe I need help with. Find where your strengths are and then make decisions upon that. Certainly the knowledge okay, can change the state that you feel. When I was going through uni, a lot of the times we'd have a lot of exams. And it felt often very overpowering, uh, these exams. They just felt too much. And so I often felt really tight-chested or really nervous or I just felt like I just couldn't handle it. But then when I empowered myself with knowledge and wrote down the dates and spaced it out and worked a plan, that fear shrunk. That lack of confidence shrunk because I now had more knowledge and I felt empowered that I could cope with these scenarios. The other thing, the second thing is embracing a good challenge. If someone comes up to you and asks a challenging question of you or a challenging job and you said, no thank you, and the next person said, you know what, it's a little bit out of my depth but I'll certainly give it a red hot go, which one do you think any outsider is going to favour? Second, yeah. obviously, okay? Do it anyway because people like people that actually give it a go. And best of all, we actually favor in the Australian culture underdogs. So if you actually already, people that give you challenging demands often know it's way harder and often they're passing it on to you because they don't want to take care of it themselves. And so when you do a pretty good go, go and even up front say, look, it's a, it's a red hot challenge, but I'm gonna give it the best of that I can, then everyone will certainly hopefully love you for it. Feel your passion. How much easier is it to do something you love to do? I have people here often come in, and certainly in the past that I've run this workshop, they mention that I have to go to work. I have to do this. I have to do that. And there may be some truth for it. At this point, if you fail to do those tasks, yes, you possibly would lose your job, you would possibly lose all this you know, a source of income, and you wouldn't be able to provide the lifestyle that you have now. But in the end, those very things of I have to are not really have to's either. Because it comes back to the case of the worst case scenario. What's the worst case scenario if you were unemployed? You know? What was the worst case scenario if you know you had no money? And literally if it's not death or dying, 
then probably it may not actually be worst case scenario. And so when you fuel your passion, there's also the opportunity to sometimes take an event that you don't appreciate and find something that you are passionate about and link it to that scenario. If you're in a situation where you currently absolutely re resent your work, then start thinking about why do you go to work? Why is it that you work? And it's obviously to generate an income. And then start thinking about why do you generate that income? What is it providing for you? It might be clothing for your children, food on the table, a lifestyle and so forth. So be passionate about that, those things and understand that when you go to work, you're really doing that to fulfill those passions. And I guarantee you, you'll find it a lot easier over time as you start to focus more about the, the lack of the less and less focus on the negativity at work and more about the positive effect that it has in your life that it's providing you. The day will fly through and the resentment for that job will slowly decline as well. Own your own piece of the pie, okay? There's nothing worse than and you've probably all experienced it, you've bought an appliance in an electrical store and you walk back in the store, this doesn't work. What's the first thing most employees do? Do they say, oh, not a problem? Or do they go check who served you? I find nine out of 10 times they check who served you because then they want to find that person to deal with you because it's not their problem then. Blame game. Exactly, blame game. People don't like taking responsibility for other people's problems. But certainly when you can own up to a problem, whether it's yours or not, and then try and provide solutions, I'm telling you, the people around you are going to be much more favourable towards you than if you're constantly trying to shift it towards other people. And that comes a little bit towards this last thing, walking the extra mile. When you are in a position of choice, of doing the bare minimum or doing just that little bit more you often get a sense of self gratitude in that but certainly the people around you will be in a win-win scenario if you take that little step more and all of it though I think is superseded by that empowering yourself empowering yourself with knowledge and that's really what this workshop is also about empowering yourself with knowledge in how to make effective choices and empowering yourself with confidence in what you do know is very important. In his book, in the three second rule, Les Perrot talks about a, a colonel, and I believe it was a, a, like a, a little foot soldier, okay? And they jumped out of a, a plane during the World War II and they landed in the middle of Paris. Now the soldier was panicking a little bit, we're lost, we're lost, we're lost, you know? And they're scared, scared, and the colonel said, well, no we're not, we're in the middle of Paris. The colonel had no idea exactly where he was, but he took the knowledge that he had and let that <coughs> empower him and have confidence, at least on the outside, okay? So, you're really coming into a point where you can be reactive with your first instinct, and that's really just letting life happen to you. Or you can take that second, that three seconds, and think about where does this fit into those three statements, and how can I be more optimistic, essentially, because and I know it's a bit of an airy-fairy type word, that optimism, you know, they even say, oh, I'd be positive. But research shows that optimistic people live longer. They have lower stress, they have lower chances of disease processes <laughs> for that very reason. And so, optimism is often taken, instead of a, oh, whatever, actually being empowered and taking action. And secondly, they often are people that visualize and dream bigger, and even better, they tend to make affirmative statements in their lives. They try and look for the positive things and try and look forward to the things that they can take action on so that they can feel, again, more empowered and taking care of their life. 